Hello, my name is Sarah Inawan. Today I am speaking on my hair. It's been a big part of my healing process in that I've really accepted my hair. You know, I've accepted that my hair is different. Um, I can't just be treated by the normal standards. I also like to look at, um, you know, the pace with which I care for myself. Believe it or not, I don't think this looks very gentle, (laughs) but um, I feel like I've definitely become more delicate with the way that I treat my hair. I'm a lot more cognizant of, you know, how often I'm taking care of it. So a little history on me and my hair. Um, I grew up in a family where I was the only one that had hair like I do. And I was born in 1980, um, living in Norman, Oklahoma in the United States. And not many people looked like me. Um, in fact, I was just thinking about that yesterday. Like how I guess once I became about 13, 13 or 14, I started getting, when I was wearing a hat, I started getting that I looked like Janet Jackson from the album that she had. Um, what was it? Fourteen, nineteen. I think, um, I can't remember, but it was the Janet Jackson album where she had a hat on and I kept getting that I looked like her and I was like, oh wow. Like I actually, that was the first time somebody was like, you know who you look like? I was like, oh God, tell me. Like you look like Janet Jackson. And I went and looked and I was like, oh wow, I do. You know, like that was the first one where I was like, wow, okay. Um, And she became just kind of like an icon to me. Um, And I'm to many, she was an icon, but to me specifically, like she was an icon in my life, Um, you know, because she looked like I did. And I didn't, I just was thinking about that yesterday. And I had the realization in the last, I would say, four or five years that seeing people that look like you as a young person has a huge impact on who you think you can be in the world. And for me, seeing that I looked like Janet Jackson, having people tell me, oh, you look like so-and-so, you remind me of so-and-so, and I'd be like, not really. You know, um, a Rudy Huxtable, she was one that I was like, oh, yeah, I do look like her. <laughs> um, you know, but she was a kid and I was a kid at the, at that time. So with Janet Jackson, it was like, oh, wow. And the older that I got, you know, once I graduated high school and became a young adult, I was actually seen as like sexy by people. And that to me was, it was new because in high school, like I didn't even get asked out, you know, like I asked a dude to go to the like morph dance or whatever it's called morph dance where the girls ask the guys and you take them like to fast food or something and then you go to this dance I asked him if he would go he said yes and then I was like hey where would you want to go to eat for the dance he's like what are you talking about I don't remember I don't remember you asking me (laughs) and I was like oh he's like sorry I'm not going um that was my high school experience with guys So, you know, I become a young adult and I move to Texas and the men, you know, were just all about me. I didn't understand. No one was calling me black. You know, they'd ask me if I was black. And when I said, no, I'm mixed, they were like, okay. Um, I thought they accepted that. I think most people were just like, let's let her say whatever she wants. Um, but I couldn't see that. I didn't know that. I wasn't educated 
around that. So I just took it in as like, oh my God, this is amazing. I really am like a attractive to men, um, which to me at that time, you know, being 19, that was really important. I thought that was something that was necessary to be a woman. Tying that into, you know, being mixed and people asking, you know, are you black? No. The reason I said no is I was told I was not black as a child, you know, by my family. They were trying to protect me living in Oklahoma. They were trying to protect me against prejudices that people would have. So when people would ask me, are you black? I'm like, no, I'm mixed. I have both. That was, that was my answer for them. And when it came to taking care of my hair, you know, when recommendations came from black women, it was, well, you're not black. You don't have to treat your hair the same as they do. And so I fell into this not knowing what to do, you know, brushing my dry hair because I was told to brush my hair, you know, having my sister be able to get her hair braided anytime she needed when I could only get it on special occasions because it was too difficult. Um, and then finally, in my late teens, I discovered hair gel. And using hair gel, I could have so much definition to my curls and it looked really pretty. And then, you know, as I became an adult, you're seeing all these people have all these products and methods that they can use on their hair and all of this. And all I had was shampoo, condition, gel. <laughs> and then a product like Diva Curl comes along and it feels so nice to be seen. They took a system that was really empty and made it feel full, but they didn't elevate the system. So much was missing. And I, it was so long before I realized what was going on. It actually took me shaving my head to realize I wasn't caring for my hair properly. I wasn't putting any oil on my scalp ever. You know, the only time my scalp was getting a good rub down was whenever I was washing my hair. And that's not enough. <laughs> um, you know, once I shaved my head and I got to start putting oils on my hair and my hair started growing in thicker, I was like, wow, I... I've been doing it all wrong the whole time. And the experts, quote unquote experts, have been telling it to me wrong this whole time too. So I finally just started doing things my own way and not worrying about recommendations, not worrying about what it looked like. You know, just accepting my hair for what she is, how she presents, um, because she's gorgeous. Like, come on. I just shaved my head two years ago, two years and almost two months ago, and it's already this long. I am not complaining about my hair. My hair is amazing, and I'm glad that it's been able to recover in this way um, from being treated better. Now that my hair had some love, I'm giving my body some love. This video here is actually sped up. I was moving really slow this morning. I wanted to feel the stabilization as it was happening. Um, but just for reviewing purposes, I sped the video up. So if at any point <laughs> you're wondering how I did something so quickly. I didn't do it that fast. I started off with a cat cow today. 
um, my right shoulder, the shoulder that is furthest away from the camera right now, was really inactive in certain areas today. Like I can't even call it tight. I did find the tightness, um, which was nice. So now I know, um, you know, what to look out for in my posture. It's mostly when I'm sitting. I'm really not a good sitter. I'm getting better at it though. I'm treating, I'm trying to treat sitting like yoga, you know, just constantly adjusting so that I can be in the healthiest posture possible. Here at this point, I'm really, after doing the cat cow um, to really open up through the spine, that's the best way for me to describe it. That's what it feels like. Um, now I'm going into this child's pose here so I can open up through the shoulders and I'm getting some movement in through the wrist trying to keep contact with keep contact with the ground with my arms um, and really breathing into it trying to settle into this trying to open up my shoulders more here um, I'm turning my thumbs up towards the ceiling to find some external rotation this movement here I have been working on this I'm calling it a modified dolphin um, I've been working with this the last week or two, um, maybe not quite two weeks. The reason I like it, the intensity is not extreme because I'm only going from my forearms on the ground to my knees on the ground. So the bottom of my body is really stable. The top of my body here it's not as easy for my shoulders to do for especially the right side remember the shoulder that's further away from the camera it's not as easy for it to do something wonky whenever i have my forearms on the ground so it's very stable for the upper body i'm in a stable position and i'm really trying to adjust my shoulders and get them in that up and back position because my shoulders have been coming forward and then on the right side down. Um, they have not ever done that this badly. I think it's just because of the time that I've taken. I've taken so much time to just be up in my head and all up in my feelings and not really in my body. And so my movement hasn't been regular like although I am trying to treat seated like yoga I am trying to treat walking like yoga I haven't been doing anything like this where I've been engaging all of my body together and this here like I really this is again is this is sped up I was moving slower than this because I really wanted to feel that stabilization. And you can see how my shoulder blades are popping out from the back. I want to try to have them flat on the back there. So I'm just trying to feel into that and do this as many times <laughs> as I have to, making these adjustments in between here. Trying to find that support all the way around. The two sides are very different here. And I think at the bottom here, the shoulder blades at the bottom, when I'm talking about keeping the shoulder blades flat, um, with where my arms are, it's not really easy lying down to have them completely flat. Um, but here, I'm trying to find that flat and openness as, there we go, there we go, as I get into essentially this downward facing dog position. Um, I just want to be able to feel that the shoulders are open across the back. And so I was finally able to start adjusting. I had to do this several times. And the reason I did it so many times, when I first did it, it was like, Oh, okay, I did that. That was great. And I first started doing this a couple of weeks ago. And then I was like, 
let me see if I just go a little further. And what I realized is if I went a little bit further, it, I actually got better at it within those sets even though the work on the muscles was really challenging i could feel the workload increasing but i was still getting better at it to where i felt more and more stable each time even though i was more tired so for this time i really tried to push those muscles while working really slowly i really just tried to push those muscles while they were tired and see if I could find the healthiest posture possible here and really get to a feeling where I could feel that my shoulders are stable. The other thing that I really like about this move here is I realized my pec minor in the chest. So your pectoral muscles are in your chest. Your pec minor muscles are towards the top. They connect to the shoulders and up into the joint there. Um, I believe there's a close connection to the lat in through there as well. Um, I don't remember. It's been a while since I've studied the insertion and origin points of the muscles. So, But what I enjoyed about this was I could feel my pec minor getting activated. I could feel it coming on. And with how my shoulder had been drooping, that muscle was not getting activated. So after I moved into the modified dolphin i then came into the shoulder cars if you're familiar with kin stretch um, they use cars it's just trying to get the fullest amount of rotation in a joint in a really controlled way so i'm really trying to focus on my hip stability as i'm seated I really want to feel that the muscles all the way around the pelvic bone, in the front, in the back, on the sides, in the middle, I want to feel that all of those muscles are engaged here. And I've got some muscles on the right side that were not firing for me. Um, but with my shoulder coming forward and down, it makes, it makes sense to me as to why this is happening. So here, I'm just moving my arms so that I can feel that I'm trying to get to the healthiest stable position possible. And I like to do this with my eyes closed. So for much of this movement today, I didn't even open my eyes. I went by feel. I went by, does this feel like it's in alignment? Am I trying, am I holding the alignment that I've been seeking? Instead of, does this look right? <laughs> I need to feel that viscerally. I need to feel it from the inside. Because a lot of the muscles that are going to stabilize are really deep muscles anyway. They're close to the spine. That's how we stay upright. At this point, I was getting a little tired just sitting onto my heels and keeping my hips in alignment. It was becoming a lot of work. So I elevated my my butt. Elevated my posture. And now I'm just continuing with those shoulder cars. I'm doing the front to back circles. Um, I'm focusing on the circle that I can draw with my shoulder, kind of. It's really more of an oval. Um, and one direction is usually easier than the other. I found that this way here that I'm doing now was... A little easier for me to gain control of the muscle and that can vary from day to day it's not always the same I do like to read up on what's going on in the body when you feel pain in certain areas there's a website that I visit forms and flows or flows and forms.com and it looks at what's going on in the body from a biological perspective you know and it'll tell you like I can't remember exactly what it was but I have this I have this memory of the right shoulder um being something to do with the father like they'll tell you they'll tell you which issues it can be related to um if it's getting better, they tell you what that could mean. 
you know, if something's really bad, they tell you like how that's related to you biologically. It's pretty cool. And I like to read that and then put it in combination with what I've been working through and what I've been thinking about. You know, my hair, I just took my hair out of cornrows today. I had it in cornrows for two weeks and it grew a lot, a lot. And being able to wash it and care for it and really get in there and rub my scalp, which I hadn't done in two weeks, um, it just felt really nice. So being able to follow that up with this movement session and really get some work in. I did shoulder work today, upper body alignment, um, and just upper body supportive strength. I was really trying to work on getting my upper body to stay active and stay engaged, stay supportive while I did these movements. Sometimes I like to put the focus more on the hips when I'm doing down dog work, but today it was for the shoulders. Later, I do go into work for my hips though. I've been getting a lot of SI joint pain and there's a physical therapist that I follow on Instagram. I'll put his account in the comments, um, but there's a physical therapist that I follow on Instagram and there's an exercise in here that I got from him. And he really explained, you know, SI joint pain versus sciatica. Explained it really well. And the muscles that I've been trying to awaken, I'm like, it's like they want to turn on, they want to wake up, but they just, they just can't. As soon as I tried this exercise, those muscles, it targeted them exactly. And I was like, oh, I knew I loved this guy for a reason. So here, again, this was really slow movement, um, but I sped this up. Just working on feeling that engagement. And here, I'm just giving those muscles a rest because that slow movement going back from the plank to the downward facing dog, it really turned on the muscles that were feeling a little sleepy this morning. It really got them firing and they were tired. Like that low burn kind of sensation in them. It was really nice. And now that my upper body has been on, I went into some cat cows. I widened them a little bit. Um, so I didn't have the heels of my hands as close to my knees as I sometimes do. I really love going from the cat posture back into that child's pose type posture. It feels so good for my back. Here with this down dog, I really wanted to try to flatten my feet onto the floor, feel my feet on the floor, but keep my arches lifted. So I wanted to still have external rotation into my legs. Just getting some more spinal movement there. If I'm gonna go one way, I really try to go the other way. Um, even if I'm working on a side that's weaker than the other, I still try to do, especially if it's corrective, I try to do the movement on both sides. I just do more reps on my weaker side to try to balance it out. And now as I'm going back into plank, I'm really wanting to focus on externally rotating the arms as I'm going in and out of that so that the elbow, the pointy part of the elbow points back instead of out to the side. Now I'm going into chest opening. 
this is a setup that I like to do it's a little more gentle to start with the block under my head so I start with two blocks I always start on the gentle setting even if I think I can do more and right now I'm just really trying to roll those shoulders up and back and trying to get my shoulders to open up and settle into that spot and trying to get them to open in the front this is actually where I was able to discover just where my tightness is in the shoulder on the right side. So in this position, my right shoulder is now closest to the camera. And that is the one that has, feel, has been feeling not even locked, but just sleepy. It's like a lazy shoulder is almost what it feels like. But again, I think that just comes from, you know, I'm learning. I'm having to relearn exactly what I need and what I want out of situations and exactly what I need and what I want out of my day, you know, from day to day. And part of that has been inactivity. You know, I moved a lot. I would work out five, six days a week and you know, many times I'm like, okay, but what was it for? Why was I doing it? I can't say I was doing it to look better. You know, to me, that's not a valid, that's not a valid enough reason. Why was I doing those workouts? Um, and so giving myself the time to decompress, not only decompress physically, but decompress emotionally and decompress some of my own personal ties to movement. You know, some of my reasons for doing so many workouts and working out so often were just because of the affirmation that I felt, the self-affirmation that I felt from completing something. I started it, I completed it, I did it, I'm good. And I wanted to reduce attachment to completing tasks as my self-worth i completed a task because i'm awesome no i'm awesome and i completed a task <laughs> because what happens when i don't complete a task what happens when i did things but nothing got finished for me, completing tasks became really important. And who was I completing those tasks for? That was another thing I had to look at. Another thing I had to look at. So I was really unraveling and rebuilding how I process the world. And part of that came through inactivity. You know, I had to learn. And now I'm coming back to a space where I'm moving and I know why. I'm moving with purpose because I really am trying to put myself in the healthiest body that I can. And I also, I, I think that in a weird sort of way, like I was meant to experience this because the empathy that I can have for other people coming from a similar situation is now greater because I don't just have to imagine what it would be like. For some of these things, I'm feeling them and I'm experiencing them my own. Maybe it is sympathy pains <laughs> that I'm having for the people of Cape Coast. Um, if so, I need to adjust my personal settings, but regardless, I am taking this as an opportunity. I'm taking this experience as an opportunity to understand how to help people in a better way and where I am right now. People are struggling, 
the economy is struggling. And I feel like people need to be able to take care of themselves from the inside out. That empowerment, you know, that could happen just from understanding, you know, their own body. That's something that I can bring here. And to me, that's that's one of the most amazing, amazing feelings, you know. So even with these aches and pains, I'm like, wow, what an opportunity for me to really connect in many ways. And I love it. I love it. At this point, I don't... Okay, so I don't... Um, plan my movement sessions I just kind of take it from one step to the next you know I'm like okay where do I want to start today it was cat cow um often it's cat cow it's such a good place to start because for me it's a good place to check in and be like okay who needs who needs help first um at this point I'm really just trying to feel the rotation transfer evenly from the right to the left side and again I know I keep mentioning it but this video is sped up I am not doing these movements that fast I'm really trying to feel the stabilization that would occur um, at this point going in for that hinge I'm holding this block here because of all the work I just did for my shoulders. I really want to be able to keep them in a better alignment than they have been <laughs> going to. Um, so from this hinge position, I'm even doing some rotations of the shoulders here. Just making sure that I can find that support. Is my pelvic floor coming on? Is my abdominal core coming on? Is my posterior core coming on? You know, my mid back, my low back, are they supporting as well? Because they should be supporting in this position. How do you get support from your hips in that hinged position? I would say to rotate your thighs outward. It's like shining your inner thigh forward. How do you get your abdominal core to come on? Pull the belly up and away from the floor and pull in. How do you get the mid back to help, not just the low back? You want to gently pull down and with the shoulder blades. Try to have the shoulder blades flatten along the back without bringing the shoulders far away from the ears and the jaw. So this movement here, this is the beautiful movement that I found on Instagram which I will put in the comments because I definitely want to give a shout out to that guy his account is great he has awesome videos he's even started explaining things um, the differences between things really well um, so for me I was like man I should try this exercise the day I tried it I was like oh this is amazing it was great Today I started on the stronger side. I usually start on my weaker side, but um, this is my fourth day to, to do some movement this week. So I started on my stronger side. I only did 10 reps. Now that I'm doing the weaker side, I really slowed it down because I wanted those muscles to have to come on. And I'm also going to do 30% more on this side than I did on the stronger side. I have issues. My right hip, it rotates back and up and really just on the right side. And because I haven't been working out like I was before, even when I wasn't lifting, I was still, you know, lunging, hinging, um, doing plyometrics, some form of working out so my muscles were engaging whenever I was demoing for clients to my muscles were engaging but now that I haven't been doing that my muscles are not engaging in that really healthy posture as often as they used to 
So that's where I'm really starting to find these imbalances that are showing up. And I'm really having to now put together programming that's going to benefit. Here, I'm just trying to engage through the hip flexors, um, trying to feel that out and keep my posture nice and tall. Here, I wanna make sure that my hips are even. So I wanna make sure that from left to right, they're, they feel side by side. Again, my right hip, it rotates slightly and I feel it in the SI joint. And so when I was starting to open my hips, now I say I say that I'm dealing with all of these things and I'm feeling all of these things. This entire time, my hips have been slowly opening more and more and more. I am amazed with how open my hips are right now. It's wonderful. Um, but I'm still, you know, every now and then I'm feeling discomfort. And it's in the form of pain, but pain that will go away. You know, I can I can adjust things and make it go away. So when I'm putting movement together for myself, now I'm trying to support the areas of my body that are really just swinging into their imbalances and really trying to take it somewhere that I don't want my body to go. And today that was my shoulder and my hips. Just feeling out the difference between the two legs on this movement here and really trying to move slowly. I'm really trying to breathe. I'm trying to let myself relax at the bottom so that the muscles can turn off and then turn on. Okay, set two is happening here. I've sped this up even more. I'm really focusing on letting my leg do the work here. I'm trying to keep my toes pointed just so my leg is active. And I'm trying to feel myself moving and feeling work happening in that hip joint. This side was tired. <laughs> I love the sensation that I get coming around the hip socket. It really felt like it was a lazy spot in my body. And this has really put some fire in there. So I feel... I feel those muscles still ready to engage later in the day. Or if I need to adjust my posture, those muscles are available to me to help my posture be healthier. For the second round here, I really tried to relax down the leg but keep the leg straight and make the work happen from the hip joint and I was able to do it and it really did make a difference Going from one side to the other, my quads did not feel the same, not at all. My right side was tight. But with everything that I'm doing to adjust my hips, um, it makes sense where the tightness is. And I also feel with bringing in work like this again, for myself, I'm going to be in a really healthy state in a couple of weeks. It's going to take some time, 
Um, but I feel like my, my hips and my shoulder are going to be really healthy. I was not able to bring my leg as high, but I feel like the work was easier when I worked on engaging the leg as one, but relaxing it. I don't, I don't know how else to describe that. This here is double speed from where I was at. I really wanted this halo to feel like everything was coming together. So I wanted to move slowly, let the two sides work together to even each other out. One of my focuses to do that was keeping the part of my hands that was touching the block in contact with the block. Not letting where my hands touch the block change. And then I was able to get it to where I could have the edge of the block tap just at the base of my neck or the top of my shoulders and get it really tight. I was able to focus on keeping the right shoulder back and in place. The first couple of rotations that I did, they didn't have that. And so then I was able to feel into that. I did this with eye clo eyes closed. I just like the internal work whenever you close the eyes. And with your eyes closed, the core stability tends to be greater. Much greater. This is also nice for me because I do this work with eyes closed. So I know what it felt like. And now coming back to be able to watch the video and see, it's nice. Um, you know, if you are working on posture yourself, I recommend try to do much of your workout with your eyes closed, as much of your workout with your eyes closed as possible and record yourself and then come back and watch it and see if what you were feeling translated into the body. Here, I decided on a tight rope position for my feet, meaning my feet were in line with each other. And I wanted that because at the bottom here, you can feel a stretch on the outside of the hips and you really feel the inner thighs working together. If you give yourself a gentle pull in with the legs, even though they're not gonna move, the feet aren't gonna move, you know, but you give yourself a gentle pull in with the legs, you can really stabilize yourself there. I did that one with my left foot in front first. Left foot in front first. My right side is actually <laughs> my weaker side right now because of everything that's going on with the hip. And I also have issues in my right foot. I think they stem from when I was in elementary school um, someone accidentally smashed my toe and I thought it was broken. It hurt really bad. And I kept asking to go to the doctor and I kept getting told no. Um, but I think that that injury is what started some of this for me from that long ago. Cause there, I mean, I had to have been under 10 years old. This balance was hard on this side. Now, one thing here with lunges, you have that back leg there, especially when you're doing a tightrope lunge, you want to be able to have some weight into that back leg, but you don't want so much weight in the back leg that you're feeling all that work come up the back leg. So if you're feeling your back leg is burning, try to put a little bit more weight into that front foot. Try to have that front foot go long and forward with your toes and try to have your arch 
the big arch there are several arches in the foot but try to have the big the main arch that we think of of the foot try to have that lifted off the ground as well in that front foot there those at a very slow pace they burn in a good way for me <laughs> good way for me I'm gonna do some hip openers here now my focus here was to get myself in a position on the mat where I could see where I was moving so I wanted to move slowly and to move with that and move the hips over so that when I go back to the other side I'm not walking myself off of the mat so I'm trying to shift my hips as I go and the first time through I always take it a little easier like if I'm going to do anything extra, I don't usually do it on the first time through. I take the first time of each a little bit lighter just to open up. And here I'm really focusing on lengthening the spine here. I don't want to round the spine down. I want to lengthen the spine so that way it can open up through the hips. And I tried this um, backward lean from two different angles today. I found that the stretch for me is nice when I can take it from two different angles. Just trying to stay on the mat with this today. <laughs> really rotating where even I fold towards, which angle I'm folding towards in the front as well. Um, I took it from two different ways there. Oh, look how full my ponytail is. I'm so happy. It's been in those braids for two weeks. So I'm like, hey, breathe. This here that I'm going into. So this is kind of like a frog child's pose I started doing this to really open up through the hips release tension from the hip to the knee from the knee to the foot um, the speed is twice as fast so I definitely don't recommend going into this and just trying to move yourself forward and backward quickly if you try something like this, take your time with it. Um, this also has been in my routine for the last couple of weeks. So I'm even more capable with and more comfortable moving around in that way. giving myself a breather here it's important take your time when you move double speed here trying to do circles in the thoracic part of the spine the thoracic part of the spine is where your spine attaches to ribs anywhere there's a rib and and it wraps around to the spine that's your thoracic spine so here i'm really just opening up through the back of the body opening up through the front of the body opening up through the back of the body and now i'm going to do some rotational work rotational work is really important and i wanted stability for the bottom of my body on an unstable surface so I took the small ball to put in between my knees so that they wouldn't move and have my feet on the floor again I held that posture on the side there for quite some time I took a couple of breaths or yeah it looks like two full breaths as I'm moving into that And this is holding on each side because this is really light work here. 
but I wanted to focus on the stabilization that was happening internally. And here what I did was remove the ball, but try to have that same stability in the legs. Try to find those muscles still coming on. Closing the eyes so that that unstable surface is really making my core work. Front and back of my core are working here. I did one turn to the left, one turn to the right, and then I switched which arm was on top and just alternated that back and forth, really holding at the side there because I want to feel the oblique muscles engage. The oblique muscles rotate the trunk of the body. They wrap around the body. So think of them as like your sides of your core connecting to the front and the back. Taking some really slow movement to let yourself connect with the entire core all the way around. And that's all I got for today. I hope you have a beautiful day. Thanks for joining me.